this was my, my I wanted you to explain to me exactly what are the requires the as a union you are doing right now at all these companies uh, right now. What what we what are we demanding now from these packing plants and any employer that we represent is especially for them to slow their production lines so they can provide an adequate time for the workers to perform their tasks, either to change their gloves, to change their masks, to adjust their masks. But not only that, so they can really actually have an access to adjust any of the equipment that they are providing to them with. Secondly, we want our members to have access to sick days, sick pay days. If they're already providing with two weeks, that might need to be prolonged for a long period of time. The other thing, too, we are demanding and we want the employers to provide these employers with us with a, a, some safety audit committees inside of those facilities so the employees that have the right to go and permanently audit the, the conditions, whether it's enough hand sanitizer, the employees have access to face masks, the employees will have ac access to face shields. The other component, and it's a very, very critical, is to, for the employees to have access to quick test system. If the employees feel concerns about their well-being and they think they need to be tested, that you make those tests available as soon as they need it. Okay, and my second question really quickly would be ready in Spanish. I want to talk to again and the mistake they was make here. They did a great job doing a mass test in Triumph Food. They test over 2,300 employees. But in this process, what they did is they test the people on Monday. They allow these people work Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And Wednesday when they got it, their result is when they pull it out and then uh, for the factory. So right now, Telequinto News was able to confirm that at least two employers that was negative in these dates. Now I are positive. My question is, are you, uh, what is your opinion about that part? And also, uh, this need be, this is a mistake that was made not only by the factory, by the CDC, by the local government. So I want your opinion. By the community. By, by, by the community, yes. Yes. So, well, well, I recognize their efforts to test every employee in the plants. I do believe, like you said, was very strategic mistake they made because the test should have been taking place in a period of time with the employees. That have, they don't have to go back to the plant because you're right. Some people tested negative, okay? But some other, several people tested positive and they were allowed to go back and mingle with the rest of the workforce. It took him 72 hours for them to obtain the result of those testings. While that was occurring, some other people were stuck in with people positive. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a couple of people that you know that they're uh, positive, negative at that time, but they actually end up being positive because they're actually engaging with other people. And let me tell you why it's important, the protocols and social distancing inside these plants. If you, that you provide with adequate social distancing inside of these facilities, the potential of you contain this virus is not is minimized. It's not eliminated. It's impossible to eliminate that. But at least you don't have to be in engaging with that many people inside of the plant. So that was, I think, was an strategic mistake made by whomever allowed this testing to take place. They should have taken take place on a Thursday and Friday, close the operation for 72 hours until you don't obtain all the results and allow those people who were negative to come back to work and those to be positive to get a pay off, time off, and be placed in quarantine. That was that was me thinking that it should have been done that way. Now, unfortunately, this was conducted by the Dep health department in Missouri, the governance office in Missouri, and some other agencies along with the company. So would I believe it was a mistake? Yes, because this should have taken place in a different time frame. That way you will allow the results to filter in into those people and you don't allow people to mingle or, and engage with other people who was positive by the time the results came back. And my last question, and I promise is the last one. You talked about mm -hmm. the lack of, um, of the language uh, help and what I say about how these employees are uh, suffering because they do not receive the information in their own language. Maybe not only by the factory, but also by the government. So I want you please tell me about that and uh, about the, what is the ethnicity of the uh, employees that at least you represent. We are talking with the Martin Rosas, who is a representative for the union of the meat plants. Okay, so 
the say the the language barrier is very 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 complex uh you have a several languages in each of those plants you have people from all over latin america south america um asia sudan africa you name it united States, everywhere so even though you can try to make your best effort to communicate about this protocols or educating people how to prevent not only at work, but even at their homes to spread the virus. It is a very complex process, but it can be done. I think the companies or the governments to identify an individual who can translate any necessary documents of their predominant language, that's going to help us to diminish the future spread of the virus. What was the other question that you have? Uh, about this petition. <laughs> Uh, the petition, like I said, the, the petition is the, uh, it is important for the employees to raise their concerns. I, I do believe the employees got the right to raise their concerns of, of uh, preoccupies of what, whatever they think that they have an issue with. If it is the avenue that they feel that is the only avenue available to them, I, I respect that. Uh, now, uh, let, let's face it, we need to work and let those concerns brought up to the table because well we understand i have people that work for us four individuals employees of this local union work inside those plants every single day they in much risk as the other people actually they're in higher risk because they're engaged with almost every employee that they came across with so one of our things is uh the companies have to be held accountable you know and uh, and make this uh, cdc recommendation mandatory that's going to be important because if you don't make it mandatory, uh, uh, this protocols, I firmly believe it's not only necessarily the union or non-union plans, this is gonna spread out in the communities. And we need to be conscious of one thing too. We need to create a better conscious about the workers, about how can we protect ourselves? If we see an absence of any protocol, how do they can raise their concerns? Like if they don't see enough hand sanitizers, not enough masks, those things have to be pursued in any legal way we can. Well, I appreciate that. Gracias, señor Martín, por darme estos minutos en inglés porque eh, lo vamos a poner porque sé que va a llamar la atención de la ciudad. Eh, agradecidos a la gente de Te lo Cuento News y al señor Martín Rosas, quien es de la Unión de Trabajadores de eh, La Carne, representa, nos acaba de decir, Missouri, Kansas y Oklahoma, donde hay, eh, eh, es uno de los sindicatos más grandes de La Carne. Agradecido por su tiempo, señor Martín. No, gracias a ustedes por la invitación y este, esperando, ¿verdad? Es, lógicamente que sigamos trabajando juntos, hace falta la educación. Totalmente. Uh, y y concientización, no solamente al trabajador, a las propias empresas, este, pienso que estamos... En a lo que le decía, reto, a la comunidad. La, con, un reto todavía más grande, porque a la hora, conforme el gobierno se vaya abriendo, va a haber más empresas, más negocios que van a abrir y yo pienso que esto se va a componer, poner un poco, poco más complejo Aún así pienso que las empacadoras de carne vamos un poquito adelantados en cuanto a implementar estos protocolos porque estamos viviendo el, el, el problema y trabajando. Hay, hay otros negocios que estuvieron ausentes porque cerraron sus negocios, porque no están laborando y que tienen que reabrir. De hecho, en Missouri y en Kansas, a partir del lunes, era uh, que se abriera parcialmente el gobierno y en negocios que han optado por no abrir, porque consideran que los protocolos que deben de seguir van a tomar una, dos, tres, cuatro, hasta cinco semanas en implementarse. Entonces, este, eh, no nomás es en todos lados, tenemos que ser vigilantes de las condiciones que estamos confrontando para podernos proteger a nosotros y a nuestras familias y a la comunidad, por ende. Entonces, este, es, es muy importante eso. Señor Martín Rosa, muy amable en habernos atendido. El llamado acá es a la conciencia, a tomar acciones que permitan salir de esto airosamente lo más pronto posible. Amigos de Te lo Cuento News, gracias por todos sus comentarios y gracias por todas eh, aquellas pues, intervenciones que tuvimos el día de hoy, María José. Nos vemos en otra oportunidad. Gracias. Sí. Que pasen buen fin de semana. Gracias.